CWI prep course, VT, root pass, module 10, part 4. Learning objectives. In this module, we're going to touch base on the visual testing of a root pass, the visual testing of a final inspection of a weld, and we're also going to touch base with um, a sample weld inspection checklist. VT of the root pass. For most multi-pass welds, it is strongly recommended that the welds of a critical nature be inspected before completion and, if possible, immediately after completion of the root pass for the following. Root surface condition, penetration, cleaning, surface defects, and distortion. And then if the root surfaces of a single welded joint are accessible, they should be checked for the following. Inadequate root penetration, root concavity, drop through or burn through. So you need to, as an inspector, you really need to take a look at the root pass because if you don't get the root pass in, there's a lot of problems in the root pass that'll just follow you up. If you have slag or you have porosity or cracking or there's just a lot of things that if you have it in the root pass, it's bad and it's going to come, it's going to, you're going to chase it all the way to the top. So you're better off to get out the bud nippers and just nip it. And if there's a problem with the root, redo it and start over. It's not generally a popular thing to do, but sometimes it's the right call. Here's a root pass of a full penetration groove weld free of slag and ready for additional passes. You can see how they've cleaned it. There's no slag in there. It's a nice looking weld bead. It's got good uh, contour, just a generally good all around bead. So that's what you're looking for. Somebody calls you over to inspect a weld bead and it, the slag hasn't been taken off, then you need to get them dialed in and let them know it's their job to have that thing clean and ready for you to inspect it or otherwise you're not going to inspect it. VT final inspection. Welds that require a final examination in the final surface condition for the following. Size of the legs and throat of fillet welds, contour reinforcement and surface finish of the weld, degree of underfill, undercut and overlay, arc strikes, weld spatter and impression marks. In addition to the above, the finished weld should be checked for evidence of the following. Incomplete fusion, surface porosity, slag inclusion, cracks, and distortion. These are all things that you need to look at on the final inspection of a weld. None of it's rocket surgery, but you need to take a look at the surface condition, and then you need to check for any of the defects that are listed there, porosity, incomplete fusion, slag inclusions, any of that stuff needs to be checked. VT final inspection. Completed full penetration groove weld. Note that all slag and arc strikes have been removed. Grinding and additional weld metal was added on the flange edges to correct minor misalignment. Take note what the, you know, the contour of the welds, everything's been shined up, buffed up, they didn't leave any arc strikes or spatter on there. Everything looks really good for the inspector to come in and do his job. They deslagged it. This is what a the final inspection of a weld should look like. All cleaned up and ready to go. VT final inspection. Most specifications require that visual inspection be done in the as welded condition. The intent is for the weld not to be altered by grinding, chipping, or any other method of cleaning the surface of the weld. Thus the inspector has the opportunity to see evidence of other possible defects. Of course the weld must be completely cleaned of all slag and oxide. Slag removal by any means that may alter the surface of the finished weld should be prohibited. So this basically means you're using a wire brush and a chipping hammer or some kind of automated um, pneumatic chipping gun to take the slag and the oxide off the surface so the weld inspector has a good clean view of what the weld looks like, what the surface condition of the weld looks like. Here's a sample pre-weld inspection checklist. 
Um, some details to check before the welding starts are the material to be welded, the welder's qualification paperwork, welder equipment and electrodes, correct bevel and smoothness of edge preparation, root opening, clearance of backing strip or ring, overall alignment and fit up, and the welding procedure. So yeah, you want to make sure that they've got a welding procedure that's qualified for the material they're welding on. You want to make sure the welder they're, they're going to have weld this actually is qualified to weld this piece of material. Um, and then you need to take a look at the electrodes and the equipment and the root opening and the backing strip. So just a general checklist that's a good place to start before you start the inspection of a job. But these are things that need to be looked at prior to any welding starting. Here's a sample checklist. It didn't come through very clean, but for the most part, this is a Wisconsin Department of Transportation uh, welding checklist, and it just shows some things such as, you know, was the correct filler material used? Did they use the right WPS? It gives you a paper trail is what it does. And if you're going to do, be doing weld inspection, which you're taking the certified weld inspector exam, if your client doesn't give you a welding checklist and you run across a checklist that you like, it might not be a bad idea to utilize a checklist when you go and um, buy off welds, when you're out there inspecting welds. So then you have a paper trail, so then six months down the road when somebody asks you what happened or what you did, you've got this checklist and you can go through and say yeah I looked at this 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 and this and here's a copy of the drawings they gave me that I worked to the revision numbers the project um, the weld sizes here's some notes that I scribbled down here's what I've got for this package for this amount of work that I did it's just kind of a cover your behind type of thing and it's also good documentation to have to make sure that you have hit everything that you're supposed to hit. Nobody can work from memory. There's a reason that, you know, in the Army or the Navy, when I was in the Navy in the boiler room, they had checklists. Every time you started up a boiler or pump, you worked off of a checklist because you couldn't commit it to memory. And if you missed something, you could damage a very expensive piece of equipment. So this way, if you worked off of the checklist, you made sure and hit every item that they thought was appropriate to be addressed. Same with a welding checklist. You can go down through there and hit all the appropriate items and make sure you didn't miss anything. Anyways, thought for the day. The following is a sample weld inspection checklist. These are details to check during welding. Preheat and inner pass temperature. Cleaning, chipping, and grinding or gouging. Structural discontinuities. Post-heating temperature when specified. Details to check after welding are dimensional accuracy of the weldment, conformity to drawing requirements, acceptability of welds with regard to appearance, the presence of any unfilled craters, undercuts, cracks, and overlaps, and make sure the post heating temperature is there when specified. In this module, we touched base on visual testing, taking a look at the root pass, visual testing, we took a look at final inspection, we also touched base with what a sample weld inspection checklist looks like and what it covers.